right, good morning, YouTube. Today, I'm going to be doing a compression test on my 7.3 IDI Turbo. I'll start by giving a little rundown on why I think it needs one, kind of the backstory on the engine and everything, and um, just kind of, and then I'll do kind of an overview on the whole thing. So, start off, this is my 1990 7.3 IDI. This motor came out of my parts pickup, which was an 88. This engine had been rebuilt and um, had the turbo internals put into it, so it's technically a 7.3 in a naturally aspirated block. But all the internals, the rods, pistons, everything are 7.3 IDI turbo pistons and rods, board uh, 30 thousandths over. Now, ever since I put this thing back together, I've had some issues with the starts immediately off the bat, so I figured it was just timing. It started off that way. It always smoked a bunch on startup and everything, and it was always just kind of cold starting, basically. Now, like I said, this is 7.3 IDI turbo. Basically, uh, this has ARP head studs, R&D's injection pump, R&D's camshaft, R&D's return rails, his intake manifold. And then this is an S261 turbo. Uh, and then this is a 6.0 intercooler right here. And then I just have some custom eBay piping. This is a 6.0 um, cold side intercooler pipe that I failed to powder coat because it didn't fit in the oven. But anyway, let's get to kind of the teardown and the, um, the compression test stuff. Now, this is the kit that I bought. It I bought it off Summit Racing. That's the part number up here, and I'll put a link to it down below. It is a it's a 7373 Power Stroke 60 and 67 um, compression tester. I believe the 60 and the 73 IDI have the same size glow plugs. I'm just gonna test all three of these because I'm not really sure which is which. Now, I was told for my purposes to do this as a cold start compression, not warmed up, just to do it immediately before I've started. So I haven't ran it since yesterday. It's been sitting in the shop. It's like 60 degrees in here. Here's all three of the adapters, and then obviously this is a compression test and the fitting. It's got, it's got a ball joint somewhat that you just slip onto here, I guess. So anyway, I'm going to tear out my um, intercooler pipes and whatever, and then we'll start kind of trying to compression test things, I guess. Okay, so I have these intercooler pipes out of the way now. I do apologize. This is an absolute freaking mess. I got my vacuum lines right here because I can't have them back there because I don't have nothing to hang it on. And then there's all sorts of other crap, fuel lines. I stripped my harness down, so all my wires are just hiding right here. It's a mess, but I guess it's all my doing. I can't blame it on anybody else. Also, this thing is a beast, but it might be a little too much for some things. All right, now I'm gonna pull this other stuff out of the way. Okay, now I'm gonna pull all these glow plug connectors up here. And I do have the bullet tips on here, so they just pop off. Okay, so this number two cylinder right here is gonna be my first culprit. I'm gonna clean up down there a little bit, and then I'll pull that out. For this kind of stuff, I just have some degreaser that I'll spray down across there and everything, and then I'll kind of just wipe it out with a shop rag, because I'm just like that, I guess. All right, so now I will, um, Take it, take this glow plug out. I think it's a half inch. I always put anti seize on these, so they're not. I mean, they're in there, but they're not going to be super hard to get out. And they're all motorcraft tips, so they're not going to be swelled or broken or nothing. I hope. Okay, I was way off about it being a half inch. It's a deep socketed three eighths. I was being stupid, I guess. I'm not really sure. All right, we got the first glow plug out. Everything looks peachy and fine and whatever. Okay, so I think I have the right adapter here. I believe this is the one for the six O, but I think they're the same. Just gonna hand thread this down in here. That's all it says, hand tighten down. Now when I do this, I'm gonna pull these off of here so that my injection pump has no power to it. Uh-oh. Okay, so I'm gonna set this here so that you guys can see this. Um, the bottom row is the PSI, and then there's KPA and bar. Top two, we don't really care about. These should all be right around 400 um, PSI for compression. If they're any lower than that, well, if they're a little lower, it's okay, but if they're a lot lower than that, then obviously that's where you have something like a dead cylinder, bad piston rings, that kind of thing. All right, I apologize for the angle. It's kind of slipped itself down, but let's just fire this real quick.
Okay, so after all the testing, here are the numbers. 410, 350, 410, 300, 400, 400, 400, 410. They average out to 385. Obviously, the kind of red flags are 300 and 350. It's not really the number itself that's the problem. It's the variance between 410 and 300. If they're all 300, it's not really as big of a deal as if one's 410 and one's 300. With this in mind, I think there's probably some other sort of issue going on with the pickup, whether it be an injector or something else. The timing is in the right ballpark. It's timed at about 9 degrees. All the, in all the injectors are new, so it shouldn't be an issue, but it is possible. Maybe kind of a boring video, but I hope it is somewhat informative. I had no real difficulties, and especially if you're naturally aspirated, this is going to be pretty easy. The turbo did get in the way a couple of times. The more the thing that ends up in the way more is the steel fuel lines, but you can still get around them with a universal joint and a, and a quarter inch. But for about three quarters of them, I just used this three eighths snap on ratchet and a three eighths a long socket. So anyway. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time. I will be um, shortly coming out with a video on the 6.0 also. So uh, keep in tune for that, I guess. So we'll see you guys next time.